Hi, uh, I am Director Young Chang. I'm very pleased and honored to be here today to have this conversation with the filmmakers of the new documentary, Sky Blossoms. Please welcome producer Alex Lowe and the director, the award-winning broadcast news journalist, Richard Louis. What's up, Young? Good to see What's you. What's up? Thanks for joining. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, so happy uh, that, I, that uh, we can have this conversation. Uh, there's much to talk about. Uh, your film uh, moved me to tears, uh, uh, numerous points throughout the movie. Um, it's really such a inspirational uh, documentary. And I wanted to just jump in with the first question, just get the ball rolling. Yeah. Uh, you know, why now? Why this film now? Uh, you want to go first, Alex? Uh, sure. And, and thanks, Young, for uh, taking the time. Um, I think very much actually like, like your film, Pandemic 19 uh, has illuminated. It's really about shining a light on, on folks who who could uh, who are really heroic during a di during difficult times uh, like these, and you know, with your film Pandemic Nineteen, Young, we see those care heroes in the medical space, which I think is where we're typically used to seeing them. But here, you're seeing not only this being that same kind of work being done at home by care heroes, but you're seeing it being done by students in Sky Blossom. You're seeing it being done by kids as young as uh, twelve year twelve years old. Um, in the case of some of the families that we profiled in this film. So I think it's really about showing, um, showing that heroism, inspiring others who are going through caregiving experience of their own um, and, 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 and really just shining a light to that. Yeah, I mean, there's more to talk about. And I think as we uh, navigate through this discussion, I, I would love to get to that imprint today, you know, given the pandemic situation we're in now, uh, how, you know, the American health crisis is, 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 you know, taking into account these caregivers and, and what is, you know, what's at stake for their, for their, you know, for their current situations and how are they dealing with that. But we can talk about that later, I think, because I think before <laughs> we dive into that, um, I have so much to ask you as, as first time filmmaker, uh, Richard, um, you know, how, firstly, uh, how did you get into the subject matter and, um, you know, how did you find your subjects? Let's start with the, those two questions. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and your first question uh, was really made me kind of think, yeah. because why now often is impossible to see? Mm. Uh, because when we started four years ago, I mean, uh, the idea was, you know, I had lived through at that point about five years of caring for my father in California. That's right. And yeah. flying back and forth from New York to California which kind of popped open my eyes and my heart, my brain. And then I started to see life and, and the world differently. And I realized that, you know, that there is, there are these heroes out there. Uh, we use it. I, and I'm very careful because we, we didn't use heroes young in the very beginning, but today mm -hmm. we are after, as you were mentioning, living through very difficult times with a viral pandemic. And then as we live through uh, what I call a selfish pandemic, where we saw people absolutely operating and thinking and treating people horribly, that when you see these students, it makes you go, we're going to be okay. Because a lot of times we were probably asking all three of us, are we going to be okay? And, and that is really, I think, why you have done the films you've done and what, and what we're going to talk about in, in, in another session, but why these sorts of folks are so important because yeah. we've seen so much of the other stuff. I think part of us, whether it's in our sleep or with our friends or our family, wonder whether the other side is there to combat this stuff. So that, that's kind of you know why it started, how it started. And we happen to be at the peak of, of this selfish pandemic. We happen to be at the peak in this last year. And so by hook or by crook, by complete luck, as you know, because you start so long uh, pack in the, in the time frame, the fact that it may be the, the, a, a movie that's helpful for today, uh, we're lucky and we had no idea being a first time filmmaker, certainly. 
So wait, uh, how far back did you start? When did the cameras start rolling? What, are we talking years three, ago? Or? Three, three years ago. Oh, wow. But okay. then we, we started trying to sell the idea four years ago to get yeah. the, the seed funding for it. I know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It takes, Woo. it can take years and uh, yeah. you got it together in a year. So that that's pretty good. And then you rolled into production three years. Yep. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, that's right. And so, I mean, the concept is... I mean, so first, like, why why the four characters? And was it strategic because you wanted to cover the country, or you know, how did you land these these subjects? How did you find them? Yeah, absolutely, young. Um, that th there was very much a strategic choice that was from the beginning made that we wanted to make sure that we were covering uh, every different region of the country: north, south, east, west, uh, mm -hmm. Pacific Island. We want it to be, and then we also want to be covering every major uh, ethnic group in the country too. So it was really a film that was representative of mm -hmm. what the country looks like, and so so that was very much in the DNA of the project from the beginning. Um, and that's something that carried through. And you know, that was the idea behind that. Young is to show um, really the sameness actually between all of these characters. They come from different backgrounds. They have different, you know, traditions in their families, but when you look at them together, you really see they're, they're united uh, by this common experience that they have as caregivers. And, and they're that students. Was some, and, and, and they're yeah, students. And, 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 <laughs> 11 and, and years old. Too, yeah. 11. 11 years old is the youngest. Yeah. Yeah. So really, so really yeah. you see that commonality between everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that was something that was important to us to be able to share uh, that, 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 that kind of common experience that we can all connect with. So, you know, what, Regardless of what you look like and where you come from, you can find one a character here that you can relate to and say, you know, that's that's really someone who looks like me and is kind of going through this this uh, difficult experience yet rising above it. And to me, also, it was a cross section of sort of the everyday person, the the working class, you know, the the veterans, you know, uh, us, um, the you know, located in what some would call flyover country. You know, like there's there's yep. these are people that are. Uh, not necessarily mm -hmm. going to get the voice and the time to be able to, to you know, be upfront in that coverage, and and so I was I was very interested as a you know Richard as a news journalist, you you you're, you know, the idea of your job is to get hit those headlines right, yeah. and yeah. and I find that as a documentary filmmaker the goal is to kind of rip that apart. In fact, to go deeper and to and to allow empathy to come through in longer form storytelling. Uh, yeah. what was your feeling like? How, like, did you know that was the idea of getting into these stories that you were going to follow that through? And oh Lord, I tell you, <laughs> uh, when we, when we got the new my sort of news approach, to, uh, which is a breaking news approach with the long form, yeah. that was I, I knew there was going to be a, a mixing of cultures that would be great, you know, kind of like, yeah. um, w w uh, two different things coming together produces something great one plus one equals three but there's always that back and forth in the beginning and i think that what informed me was uh, my desire to tell uh, intersectional stories and news so if i'm talking about uh unauthorized immigration i always have three or four different types of faces i just don't have latino faces up there i have asian american pacific islander faces i have african-american faces I have European American faces. And the point is not to say, hey, look at these different, but I don't call them that. You yeah. just see them. And, and we try to do that in the film. I don't ever say this is the African American family, this is the Latino family, and that's not the purpose. But we just, you, you see it and you experience it with them, right? And, and I think that approach of trying to bring on that passive empathetic reaction yeah. is so important. And so, moving that into the film and, and Alex was talking about the treatment earlier, like the treatment was my wish list. I had the, the thematic and then I had like 30 cross tabs, yeah. 30 of them. And regionality was important. That's why we have uh, Midwest, South, East, West, and Pacific islands. Uh, we actually have uh, one other geography that we're using for a, a different film, but that was the, the objective. And then to show all of the major ethnic groups, and I, and I think that the the coming together, though, like I like to hit the ground and I work from the before I get up until after I go to sleep. And I remember when we first going through it and I because our, our, our typical breaking news crews when we're out in the field, 
you know, there are no eight or eight, uh, four hours in a rest. It is just you go all day <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you don't say anything. You sometimes eat, sometimes you don't. And uh, like, that's one example. And I, I laugh about that because it's not only that sort of work structure. It is also, there goes my ear. It's also, um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're yeah. Good. It's, it's, it's also, so I'm so excited. My ear is squeezing out the, the, the AirPod <laughs> right now. But it's also the editing. I mean, editing yeah. this for a year? Yeah. Editing is for a year. <laughs> I edit, you know, we're editing for two hours or four hours usually. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. There's a lot. That's a good question. It's a really good question, Young. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, just to go back to the, the cross-section idea, I mean, quite a diverse a group of characters you follow, um, but but uh, and and also interconnected, obviously through theme, uh, through the you know just the fact that they're what they do. Uh, um, but also there's a uh, I find that um, uh, their stories are dramatic. You know, each has a story. It's not just doing the. It's not saying that you just you know you found each group, but in fact you found stories that could evolve and, and move. Um, you know, I'm thinking of uh, Bill and Jenna, for example, and uh, uh, you know, just some of these, uh, the Brian and Rihanna, you know, some of these characters that you follow that give us a lot more than just, um, you know, just representation. It goes deeper than that, obviously. And there's no question there. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, no, uh, no, you know. I, it, it is. And in fact, the difficulty young was showing something that you can't see and this is film and how do you show caring for somebody um on film uh rihanna taking care of a, a father who has two types of cancer right two types mm -hmm. of cancer but you, we, our objective was we got to show people what it means to take care of somebody else who's living through a disability. And we have to do it in a way that if you just look at the film, you go, oh, it's not there, but we know because we're, you know, me as a caregiver, Alex also is a caregiver. Mm. We understand what that third rail is or that sixth sense is. Mm. And one of the devices we put in that we really leaned on or we tried to uh, was animation. Um, yes. and, and, and as well with the score, and, it, and that's one thing we learned, by the way, on the, uh, and through the process, Young, was that we spent a lot of time on the score and the theme songs, and we threw it into the, into the documentary, and they were like, oh, you don't do that with docs. You don't go heavy. <laughs> and I remember with Gene, Gene and- Oh, and Gene, I think the maybe executive even, producer. Yeah. yeah, executive producer Gene, and, and as, as, as well, Don, um, one of the producers was like, mm -hmm. y'all got to pull back a little. Y'all got to pull back. <laughs> And we're like, all right, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're coming at it from training that is not in the the film, or, you know, it, you know, because I'm not a journalist, right? I approach things from my film school approach, which lacks right. uh, the journalistic training that I think I then learned consequently just mm -hmm. by the process, and that 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 is about the moral ethical questions you face as a documentary mm -hmm. filmmaker, which is constant and evolving. And, um, and, and it's complicated. Like I, something that I admire with your work in this film is your ability. And I think it's, you know, give credence to your, uh, you, you, your work as a journalist, but how you interview. Um, and, the, and so I'm, you know, I'm always seeking advice and uh, and tips on how to <laughs> interview too. properly because I don't know how to do it. Do you have any, you know, how do you do that? How do you get such evocative moving, for lack of a better word, performances from your characters, you know? Um, how, how did you get to that place in those interviews? And um, can you talk a little bit about that? You know, I, I think in this case, it was, um, it was that I was a caregiver too. And you know, these were very young um, characters and, 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 you know, interviewing Rihanna uh, wasn't the easiest. And um, certainly Jenna and Darren um, and Camille um, weren't necessarily um, 
you put them on TV and they're hitting it, hitting the ground running. Right. And so I think just being very honest and calm and vulnerable myself, like I'm not going to be in control. Um, I'm, I'm not going to ask the perfect question, but I'm going to ask the right question of my heart and yours. And um, I find that that is even in my work as, as an anchor covering breaking news stories. So for instance, I've done so many mass shootings in the last two years and I've spoken mm-hmm. to so many survivors that I, I think I realized along the way it is I'm okay. And I'm not going to ask you the perfect question and I'm not going to sound like an anchor. I'm not going to sound like an interviewer, but what I am going to sound like is what my heart is really feeling right now. It's like, why were you so courageous amidst this? Mm-hmm. What is it that made you do this? And, mm-hmm. and then asking it three different ways or coming back to it and, mm-hmm. and being really comfortable with my imperfection as a interviewer. And I think that young has given me uh, a comfort of, um, you know, I talk about transparency and authenticity. I think that is, uh, after doing so many interviews in, in tough situations, when I'm sitting down with an Interatron, which, you know, that really yeah. removes us um, from, the, from the interviewee, that that had to come through even more. Wow. Yeah. I, I think, Richard, you know, there were times on, you know, when we were shooting this too, even with you having done so many hundreds of interviews, uh, you know, along your career, that even you were just shocked by how open some of these students were uh, mm-hmm. with with us out there in the out, out you know out there in the field. Yeah, I was. I was. <laughs> oh, they're talking to this old guy. I mean, hey, what's he doing here? But you know, that's something they, to do. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, really quickly, I think that that was just that. I think that shows how amazing they are. Yeah. Because. I, I let them know straight. I'm going to be here from the beginning until the very end. And whatever you give me, I'm going to take care of. And I've, mm-hmm. I've, I think I've done that so far. I did it through the edit process. As Alex and the other producers know, I, I stuck to what I knew was for them. And me being a caregiver for so long, I believed I could funnel and channel their energy into the edit process. And uh, I let them know all, th- even today, that you know I'm here and I'm not going to misrepresent you. I am yeah. not going to do that. You you totally feel that. You totally feel that from beginning to end. I felt there was a, a closeness, an intimacy with them and their their uh, situations that uh, that you know made this a step above in terms of trying to understand perspectives. Uh, and you, I think it's a great accom- accomplishment. Um, and so. Uh, I guess just to try to synthesize the ideas you just talked about, but basically if I'm looking for the tips and the advice, it's basically that you kind of threw away the, the, uh, you, you, I mean, I don't know, does it differ from your usual approach, uh, you know, and then if uh, interviewing and interacting with the people you film, um, you, you know? Yeah. Or, uh, I, um, I, I think with news, it depends on the story. The one, the stories that really, kind of forced me to, to realize my own humanity were all of these tragedies where I'm on the ground and having to make sense of absolute messes around mm. me into what was really happening. And amongst all the tragedy, and this is the problem sometimes because what the, the stories I'll pitch are always very much the goodness of humanity amongst all the horrific humanity. And I sometimes move, move too quickly for that, but I think my heart wants to find that. And mm-hmm. so I think with, with being comfortable in that space um, allows, allows or pushes me to look for the good stuff. Because what stands out for me amongst the shooting in, in well, we can pick it, uh, <laughs> the shootings in, in France yeah. or the shootings in Las Vegas are always those people that did something to stop it. Mm. You know, the shootings in El Paso, Texas, where, you know, a, a family, a young family, uh, a young Latino family with their four children in the back and an old suburban 
going to warn other people about the shooter that's right behind them and that that guy's shooting at them why didn't they just run away yeah but yeah. they didn't and that and that's like the these student heroes is well you don't have to do this you you yeah. don't have to take care of your mom or your dad or your grandpa your grandfather but they do it anyway and, and the thing is there, there are over five million of them but sometimes we oversimplify what people are based on whatever because it's easy that way right i walked away learning a big thing and that was when i yeah. look at especially students young i look a little bit closer and i i stop mm -hmm. to think about you know because we're, we're older folks me uh the most is that you know we <laughs> we we've learned to express ourselves but students and you remember back when you were a student uh, in high school and middle school and elementary school in rihanna's case you didn't know how to say stuff. And when you kind of were learning how to, you really didn't want to say it. So I, I'm looking a little bit deeper at, at, at the way folks are and I need to. And I hope when, if you watch the film yeah. that you do. Parents were saying, I'm looking at my kids differently now. Darren's mom, Jessica, after seeing the film was like, mm. I guess my kids are really kind of cool. Well, of course, Jessica. I mean, you live <laughs> with them every day. It's but amazing that, that, yeah. I mean the 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 load they take on. Also, that as you're saying, the 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 inertia they have to want to to be the caregiver uh, is a great maturity, and it's a way. As in off, often ways, we underestimate the ability of our our children. Certainly, I have a four year old daughter, and uh, she walked in when I was watching your movie, and and I was like, oh yeah, stay a while, let's watch this a little bit, <laughs> and and you know, I want you know, I want my children to to see that in the characters you you have in your film, just their, um, you know, the care is mm. is so essential. And it is, it goes across ethnicity or whatever and culture, you know, and, and that's what really stuck with me. Um, let's talk about, just flip a little bit and talk about to, today, like the, I mean, I don't know if you describe America's situation as a healthcare crisis or not, but uh, we are at a place now. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you are connecting things from this film into today's world? Yeah, there's so many ways to do it. Alex, you want to go first? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, Young, as we had mentioned, as I had mentioned uh, earlier, I think it's really about um, now that we're kind of we've brought in some of the lingo uh, when we talk about the film now that's being used to describe yeah. the current uh, pandemic. So things like care, terms like care heroes, you can turn around and say, look, these kids, these, these kids, these students at home are also care heroes. I think that's one, that's been one big change that, you know, we've kind of, we, we've kind of, um, we, we, we've shifted with and how we, how we describe these students. Uh, Cause that is just kind of the, the, the verbiage of the time. Um, as far as uh, the, the, the students themselves, now I think uh, things have really shifted with a, lot, with, with a lot of their lives because now as caregivers, they are dealing with so much more. Those challenges uh, that they were facing before are, are magnified even more. Um, and that is the same for, all, for anyone who's going through caregiving experiences right now. So, so many folks across the country are, are realizing, gosh, I am a caregiver or I'm going through these experiences or COVID has made me a caregiver. In fact, Young, we, we looked at the numbers and did some es estimates behind how many uh, caregivers may have, may have uh, new caregivers may have come out of the COVID crisis. Mm -hmm. And we found that it was something around uh, 5 million or so new caregivers that have resulted from COVID. And um because there That's are from so October many, too, right? That's that from October. October. Or like that. Yeah. So those yeah. are so those are older um, numbers, and I'm sure has you know only increased uh, more and more. Um, but so many have found themselves in that in that position, or have found that their position as a caregiver has become so much more difficult uh, as a result of COVID. And I think Sky Blossom can help to kind of speak to those experiences um, that, you know, that, that all caregivers are going through. It's just the emotions, the, the difficulty, the, ch the challenges of it are just, have just really become heightened. And it's something that I think people are just kind of realizing now. Yeah. Young. And, and, uh, you know, a lot of folks today are feeling like 
man, I feel like I'm, a, I'm, I'm in a, in prison at home. Yeah. And, uh, for those families that have sickness in the family or disabilities in the family, you know, even more, uh, you know, accentuated. And I think when you look at the students, our, our desire is to say, guess how they feel, mm. guess what they feel like when they're that age stuck at what they think is they go mm. to school and they are free as a bird come home mm. and they have this new job, this second life. And mm. this second life is not meant to be poor me. It's, it's meant no. to be an, in, an inspirational cry because I, the, the hundreds of times I've seen it, I still, you know, cry and tear up. And it's because I'm so inspired by the simple little things they do in, in, in even going through the edit, you know? And, and so I, I think the objective is that, you know, when you say bring it to today is that, we want today's students to, to know that kind of what that is that we're showing is good and you can be it and accept it and you can try to be like that as opposed to the counter narrative, which is uh, if I'm mean, I get more attention. If I scream, I get more attention. If I go like this, I get more attention, the right kind of attention. and and the characters uh, were chosen because they're the opposite of that. Most of the time they are kids, right? But most of the time they're saying, I don't believe that. That's not the way it's, uh, that's not the way I should live. Right. If anything, that is, is uh, well, extremely hopeful. And, uh, and, and as I said earlier, just very inspirational because we've been really dragged through a lot of that other part of, you know, the way so- the dark side of society and uh and i'm so happy you know when you come upon a film like this you just you really see there is a hope for the next generation this is the generation you know the younger the children the the, the students uh they're carrying forward uh these um you know uh the, the things that we need you know desperately um absolutely qu- quickly joe the, like i think i think uh this film has just kind of been doing really well out there um and i've been and i know that there's a lot of great action happening around this film so uh would you mind talking a little bit about that you know the the release the you know some of the uh um responses you've had with the film um and even within the political spectrum too um yeah um i could talk a little bit about some of some of the uh release young and uh this film we, we premiered on uh, Veterans Day in November uh, over at the Kennedy Center. And we had um, this incredible premiere there where we brought in a 50 drive-in, uh, 50 cars there to do a big pop-up drive-in theater at the Kennedy Center. And uh, it was just an incredible evening there. And the, you know, the idea behind all of this Hoopla Young is really, we wanted, despite COVID, we wanted to say, hey, you know, we're, we are going to give these students uh, heroes and caregivers mm-hmm. across the country really the celebration that they that they deserve. Mm-hmm. And um, that was an incredible launch. And on that same night, we had worked with uh, Universal Pictures and AMC Theaters uh, as community partners, and they put the film in 50 theaters in every, in every state across the country. Mm-hmm. Um, just an incredible launch uh, on that night to be able to share it with so many um, and for somebody to come out and support uh, the film and, and these families, um, you know, and, and for, for us as first time filmmakers, too, it was just unbelievable. We had never dreamed of anything like that, I think, you know, um, and, and certainly not to be able to, you know, to be able to do it during a, a pandemic, no less. Um, we we're also we also had a premiere as well uh, over at the historic Lemley Theater in Los Angeles and they put us in their virtual cinema and uh, has extended the run there. Um, it's just really been been unbelievable, Young. Um, but I think for us, what's exciting, uh, not just as first time filmmakers, but as, as API filmmakers, is really being mm-hmm. able to get 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 films kind of into the mainstream bloodstream. Um, and I, I think really the that lot that theatrical release. Uh, that we were able to have for one night only is really representative of that 
uh, of that shift. And one, mm-hmm. one thing that we've learned recently is about, I think, 18 or, or 20 films, I think, by API filmmakers this 19. year are 19. 19. 19. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, David we'll Magdell. Split the difference. I attribute I I tribute, I tribute <laughs> to David Magdell for that. Split the difference. Yeah. In, in contention <laughs> yeah. this year, though, for... Um, it's remarkable, for, for, yeah. Which is, which is just remarkable to see that and to see films, you know, from, from API directors being able to get that kind of release and reception in, into the mainstream, you know, through yeah. Universal, through MTV, through, you know, other distributors, be able to to really be able to get the films out there um, and, ha- and how the voice is heard is just, yeah. it's just incredible. We, we love I, to see that. I love the groundswell and I, I think it, it should it should be the new norm. You know, it shouldn't be. It, 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 I'm looking for the days in the future where just there are 20 films by by you know <laughs> you know Asian right. Pacific filmmakers. It's just the way it is, you know. And it's not a question because because yeah. uh, you know it it uh, it mirrors the demographic, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I wanted to say, you know, um, we certainly young do not believe at all that it's like uh, flipping that thing there. <laughs> um we we know that that's the only thing i have in my room it's, it's a really exciting <laughs> studio here but what i learned you know as i was reflecting as alex was talking is you know it was because of our asian american pacific islander community that i was even able to do the film we were able to do the film four mm-hmm. years ago is it, it was because of sue van it was because of daphne kwok it was because mm-hmm. of don young saying go do it go do it go do don it young. and then yeah. and then gene <laughs> And then Jean coming to sit with me, and you know how what a downer she is. It's <laughs> about four years, three and a half, four years ago, saying, you can do it, do it, do it, do it. And then guess what? Uh, Ursula along the way, where I meet her for the first Ursula, time, come yeah. on down to L.A. And then later on, they, they kept on. I, I, I see them kind of like, you know, I'm that uh, really <laughs> slow, out of shape runner at, at, at the 5K and yeah. I'm running, but they keep on throwing me bottles of water and, and power bars because, yeah. my gosh, I don't know why you do this, Young. But I don't know why either. <laughs> it, well, it, I have huge respect is what I'm saying. And it's because of our Asian American Pacific Islander community and those who have gone before who yeah. have created things like ADOC, yeah. uh, been yeah. successful like you, and been able to teach us the lessons you know first time yeah but not by luck but by by a lot of support and and then later on at the at the end of the journey whether i should say the last quarter uh you you know you have folks like david that who's in here throwing me those bottles of water still throwing (laughs) uh, alex the bottles of water like this is what you got to do this is how you do it and so i don't i don't take the very element of me looking like this lightly because i've tried to own it and 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 use our community yet yeah, use yeah. but but go to the the gray hairs of if course. you will yeah of course sorry, sorry David <laughs> but the gray hairs and and try to figure it out because yeah. you and others have paved the way for us new our, our new timers and yeah. in a way uh, so have you though Richard I mean you certainly have um, been instrumental in your you know in the work you've done over the years and uh, for the community as well and that's not gone unnoticed I would say and. Uh, mm-hmm. And so that I think, um, yeah, I think it's just that circle that we're in. That's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. And, and, exactly and right. It feels good. It feels good now more than ever. Um, Keep on pushing, uh, as I say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Like, I think we're winding down the conversation a little bit. I'm wondering if there's, uh, you know, any anything you want to add to this this discussion? Um, you know, you've talked about all the, all the EPs in your film. I mean, there's quite a list of contributors and I, I was very impressed uh, that you've gotten everyone from Bing Bing to uh, uh, you know Brian who I know I know all these you know all these characters and and it's quite lovely to see that Montel Williams you know I see that and I, it means that you know I think that that's a good stamp on the film too that there is a lot of uh, uh, voices that have that want to carry that film through for you and uh, yeah I don't know if you want to mention anything else yeah, Brian and I were eating burritos um, <laughs> in Chelsea. And I was like, hey, you know, uh, should I do this thing? And he's like, well, and he's so calm. He was just like, well, <laughs> this is what you think about. This is what you do. Yeah, and Montel uh, and David Hyde Pierce, Linda Hope from the Bob Hope Foundation, all these people we feel very grateful for. And Elizabeth Dole Foundation, which kicked us off for me so many years ago to be aware of 
caregivers and military families, which we, we selected military families, but you can tell that it is a lot like our, our communities of color. We are people of color, but we're also more than that. Mm. And so are those from military communities. And, and that's what we tried to show. I mean, I guess yeah. the last point, Young, and I know you're, you're, we're wrapping up here, for me at least, is that you, we, we had to walk the talk. And so even though, you know, we raised, uh, I mean, it's, it's about a, you know, two and a half, three million dollar production. And you're probably saying where all the money go. That's OK. No, uh, no. But, you know, no. <laughs> we, but, but, but we, we, we have 10 volunteers. I'm one of them. Alex is one of them for the entire film. It went all to the contractors and subcontractors. 94 percent of that which was raised either in pro bono or otherwise went to people of color or those who were other in other words gender or ethnically diverse 94 percent in the orchestra 86 percent were uh gender or, or ethnically diverse 100 percent of our core film crew were female 100 percent in the 15 years i've worked in network tv i have never had a male dp well guess oh, what for great. three years i got to work with one right. as well as my my sound engineer and my ac and, and that was our focus uh, all the way through is that we were going to walk the talk our composer is female um but again they were just good as they were and happened to be female i must underline I that, that. Yeah. and in the 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 thought that i get tired of hearing is that because you're x then you're y when really, I can't stand that. You're, yeah, yeah. It, oh, uh, well, Richard looks this way, so therefore he's. You know, uh, I've never yeah. heard that at all. But in any case, <laughs> we we we, uh, we have to walk the talk, and yeah. um, we were lucky to to pull the team together, and I'm I'm glad we were. Yeah, I can't it's, give enough yeah. credit to, to the crew actually, and you know, young. One of the questions you had asked earlier was about the interview process. I think yeah. one thing. Actually, and I that came up to came up to me like later later here in this conversation was, um, you know, at the end of every interview, and this was an all female crew that we had in the field, you know, uh, Richard Yeo, as the interviewer, w would ask the crew, "Does anyone have any other questions for the for mm -hmm. for for the for the interview subject?" And that's something I haven't seen on on a set before, and the crew was was you know they they have developed such close ties with the families and, and you know mm. being being out there in the field and mm. the trust and that they you know are able to build and relationships there is so key to to um to what to what you see on, on film but be, you know but their perspectives i think added so much to this film in the process and that um you know i can't give them enough credit for that and not only and not only that they're um you know, for, for us being first time filmmakers, for being able to work with, with that crew, with their experience, as well as with all of the EPs that you mentioned, um, you know, who are just so generous and, and supportive throughout this whole process, you know, without, without any of them, I don't think we would have been, been able to have, have done this because we would, you know, we'd have no idea what we were doing. So uh, they really, they really made it happen and, um, you know, allowed us to make, to make our mistakes, but also yeah. to, to learn from them and, and to do and to um, to be able to put this all together. Maybe uh, before we wrap up, then the question I do have is: Have the subjects seen the film? And uh, maybe you give us a little yeah. recap and update. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did your daughter think of the film? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of five stars. Okay, all right. <laughs> she yeah, was moved. Yeah. yeah. At four. I mean, she was moved. At four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, um, that was a response I was sharing earlier in that they were fairly surprised about the way their families are and, mm. you know, mm. living in a family, we all get it. And I, I think for me, that was the success criteria for the film for me was strangely not being part of the typical arc of a film. And what happened with COVID is now we're back into the arc of a film. Uh, but we did not begin that way. Uh, we were ready to launch in, in April, uh, which was completely after everything would have happened. Uh, but because of COVID, we, we didn't. And so we were able to spend more time on it. And the families who got to see it 
um, were, as I said, surprised at who their children are. And I think uh, a little bit more heartened about the beauty that their kids uh, have and are, mm-hmm. are, they hug them a little bit differently. Um, mm-hmm. In terms of the, the, the kids, um, Darren's in college now. Mm. I was, she was 15 when I first started interviewing her. Mm. Um, it, Camille, uh, not in college yet, but on her way, she mm. has not been seeing her, her father and grandfather as much as of late. Uh, the Hawaiian family, um, they are fantastic. Kamali and Kaleo, uh, as native Hawaiians, they, uh, were really representative of the strong culture and, and, mm. and, and, and the hope that it brings to the country in terms of Kuleana. And I, I, I really enjoyed that they shared that with us, but we've, yeah. we've lost, uh, for now that contact with them young and, and you know how it is with certain families and characters, they decide we're, we're we've had enough of this. Cause it could be a little weird, all these cameras yeah, and stuff. I know how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rihanna also graduated on the same day her father graduated from community college. Oh. And now, uh, even before COVID, um, was not going to class because of certain situations of, of bullying. Um, um, that was, yeah. that, that was, uh, on and off. Jenna now is, uh, she has another development in her family and she just reached out to us two weeks ago. And I'm not sure if she's announced it yet. So I, I don't oh. want to say what it is, Okay, okay. <laughs> but she's had yet another. And, and the reason being as, uh, as if you've seen the film, that will be an issue for her. Um, so they're all just like Darren going to college is, is a whole thing. Yeah. I feel like they're all my kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and one, one thing I should add though, with actually them seeing the film is because we had that uh, 50 state, theatrical launch um many of the families were actually able to go see it with their communities right and you know they came on on that opening night you know texting us uh pictures of that and saying you know wow what what how much it meant for others there who were at that those screenings to be able to say you know you're doing something really incredible uh and especially especially to the students there so um I'm really glad that we were able to make that happen because had we not had that, you know, I, I don't think everyone been, been able to go to DC where we had, we were having that drive in. Mm-hmm. So um, being able to give them that experience, that experience where they could really get the, that heroic uh, applause that, that they, that they deserve, um, mm-hmm. you know, is, is, that's just a really good feeling for us. Well, I, uh, I think we should, kind of like end on that note I think I think it uh, you've you've made Sky Blossom such a emotional and um, an uplifting film gives us a lot of hope right now and I thoroughly enjoyed it um, and uh, I'll think be thinking of it and the stories of each character for quite some time um, and so uh, thank you for making it thanks for uh, coming together for this little chat and um, uh, can't wait for more eyeballs, as they say on that. On your film. So, um, yeah. Young, thank you. thank you. Thank you so much, Young, thank for you taking so the time. Really, thank really. You, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Richard.